Welcome to the third part of week 8, EEE 157, Communication Systems and Networks. In the previous part of the lecture, we talked about sampling, which is the process to discretize analog signals by sampling it in time. Okay, so this is discretizing the time element of your analog signals. For this part of the lecture, quantization, we'll be talking about how we discretize signal levels for our analog signals. Okay, so the quantization process is a process to make an analog signal fully digital by discretizing the value of the signal. So if your sampling discretizes time, quantization discretizes signal level. And to visualize that, we have a signal here, which is an analog signal. It varies in a smooth and continuous fashion. It takes the minimum and the maximum uh, level of the signal right here then converts them into uh, discrete values. The minimum taking up the zero value here and the maximum taking up some arbitrary maximum value here. There, we have four levels, so this could be the integer four. So this would be zero, uh, one, sorry, this, this, should, this three rather, and this is two right here. Okay, so you have four signal levels. So you, ha you have a two-bit quantization uh, uh, two, two bits of quantization here in this example. So this is the basics of quantization. So basically, the process of quant... Sorry, this is a typo. This should be D. Okay. The quantization process involves mapping a range of values into a single value, single discrete value. And the, and the list of values that we have, the set of values that we have, is what we call a set of symbols. Okay, so the simplest example of quantization is rounding off to the nearest ones. That's one example. You round off the signal based on its current value. So if your signal maybe falls between negative 0 0.4 to positive 0 0.4, then the quantized value of that would be 0. So this is an example here on this. Oops. These four rows, you can see that if your message value of zero is 0 0.1, we round that up or round that off. If we round it off, the quantized value is 0. 0 0.8 rounded off will be 1. 1 1.1 rounded off will be 1. 1 1.6 rounded off will be 2. So uh, we define the quantization step. Uh, that would be the difference between two quantized values. And uh, if we use what we call a linear mapping, the quantization step delta is constant. Okay. Generally, delta can have any value. If you're rounding off to the nearest ones, then the quantization step is equal to 1. For this example, the quantization step is equal to 1. But generally, delta can have any value, but it is dependent on the number of bits and the voltage range of the system. So... This is how you uh, visualize that statement, okay? You have a uh, signal level, okay? a continuous signal level. Any uh, signal can have a value between these discrete steps right here. So let's say your signal value falls here, okay, right here. And then when we quantize it, it will be mapped to some discrete output level, some S sub 4 right here okay so the distance or the range of values where we map s4 so any value that falls within this range is s4 the quantization step is between these two limits of your uh, signal level okay and that is equal to delta or the quantization step so this could be from negative 0 0.2 to negative 0 0.1 and your quantization step is equal to 0 0.1 for that case okay so with that once we get your symbols we can already ready represent it in terms of bits but that is for the encoding part we won't discuss it that much we just know that the number of discrete output levels is related to the number of symbols using this equation right here if we have more bits per symbol we can have more discrete output levels therefore your delta here can also be less than what you have. Okay, 
So, m is equal to 2 raised to b. Okay. So, in this type of quantization, we call it the uniform quantization because this, uh, the distance between two boundaries, okay, your boundaries between your signal levels right here, is the same, equal to some constant delta. Okay. Okay. Because of quant quantizing a signal, we get uh, some form of noise when uh, comparing the output signal to the input signal right here. If you take the difference between your input signal, which is the blue one, and your output signal, which is the red one, if you take that difference, there is some form of noise that is distorting your original signal. And this is uh, the effect of quantization. If you try to quantize a signal, if you quantize a signal, definitely, you will be adding some form of noise to your signal, okay, and you will be distorting that signal. Recall that you can't uh, completely represent an analog signal with a digital using a digital system, okay. There's some form of noise, right? The quantization noise we can quantify it as the quantization noise, and this noise corrupts your analog signal, making your digital signal unable to recreate your analog signal. However, we can minimize this quantization noise. The quantization noise power, right, since, since this is a signal by itself, we can uh, characterize it in terms of its power. The power is dependent on the quantization step delta by this equation. Only note that this equation only applies to uniform quantization Bottom line is that if the sorry, if the uh, delta is small, there, then your quantization noise power is also small. Okay, so quantization noise is also small. So we can relate this delta and this quantization noise power to each other and the number of bits per signal. So. Okay, so the quantization step delta is equal to the signal, the maximum signal level. Let's call it VPP or peak-to-peak -peak voltage, divided by the number of symbols to raise to b. Okay, if we substitute that to the quantization noise power. So the quantization noise power p sub q will be delta squared. So that would be uh, VPP squared divided by 2 raised to 2b okay, times 12. Okay, so how do we reduce the quantization noise? We can reduce the quantization noise by limiting, uh, by increasing rather the number of bits. If we increase the number of bits right here, this term increases, therefore your quantization noise power decreases. And if we decrease the quantization noise power, we are uh, we have a signal that is more accurate in representing an analog signal, a digital signal that will represent the analog signal better. So that's how we quantify the quality of your digital, uh, digital signal compared to your analog signal. If we minimize the quantization noise, then we can recreate the signal better. That's the bottom line here. Okay? But what's the trade-off? You're using more bits. You're using more bits to represent the same symbol. Then that means you're using large, a larger computer memory. Okay? So that's what I mentioned from the start. That if you want a better representation of an analog signal in a computer, you need more memory to represent that. Okay? So, for example, would be if, if, if you've heard of the lossless audio. Okay. Maybe some of you anime fans know this lossless audio. A 3-minute song is 300 megabytes large. Okay. Compared to the uh, other songs that you may have downloaded before or may have taken from a CD. A three-minute song is around three to six megabytes. But a lossless audio, if you want a higher quality of audio, 
lossless audio encoding uses 300 megabytes of your storage space. Well, of course, this is not an efficient encoding process, but it uses more bits per symbol to better recreate the sound. So that's why it goes up to 300 megabytes. So maybe you have encountered this lossless audio. I have encountered it, and I don't feel the difference compared to this very lossy audio that we have, that I have downloaded before, I mean, I compared. Okay? And that's it. Alright, so what about non-uniform quantization? This uh, non-uniform quantization technique is used for signals with a large crest factor. The crest factor is defined by this equation right here. Don't need to memorize that. Oh, yeah. uh, basically, a signal with a, with a large crest factor is a signal that fluctuates fast compared to its variance. Okay, so the amplitude of the signal, the maximum value of the signal uh, is very high compared to its variance. And a common example of this is a speech signal. So if you try to quantize a, spe a speech signal right here, as you can see here, uh, some uh, parts of the signal which is rich in information is lost due to quantization. So if you try to quantize this, all this, all of this here, the fluctuation in the signal there will be quantized to zero. And that would be a problem when we are going to transmit the signal digitally or we're going to represent this signal digitally. What's the solution here? The solution is to increase the number of bits. If you increase the number of bits, well, you can increase the signal levels as such. However, if you again, if you increase the number of bits, you're using more memory. So what's the uh, what's the trade-off there? You're using more memory. How can we go around that limitation? We'll use what we call the te uh, compounding technique. So non-uniform quantizers, when we use them, they have different quantizing steps, quantization steps rather, between symbols. That's very uh, expensive and complicated to implement. So to use, uh, to, to make the process cheaper and more efficient, we use what we call compounding. First, we compress the signal at the transmitter, okay? and at the receiver, we expand it. So compress it first using some formula, okay, where uh, the signal that is very small will be amplified and the signal that fluctuates fast or large rather will be compressed okay and you perform the opposite uh, opposite operation here such that you recover the signal without distortion okay so you compress the signal first before sampling and quantizing it okay and then you expand it at the end so you can get your original signal okay so the bottom line here is that if you uh, compress the signal first, then any small fluctuations, let me just clear this, like any, any small fluctuations here will be amplified large, and any large fluctuations here will be compressed small. That way, relatively, you have a larger fluctuation for signals that are rich in information, the part of the signal that is rich with information, and there's a part of the signal when there's a large fluctuation, we have compressed that fluctuation such that it's still within the bounds of your quantization. Okay? And we're able to quantize this smaller signal better. There's less information loss due to quantization. And that's how compounding works. Okay? So there are two different compounding techniques, okay? the mu law standard and the A-law standard. Okay? The input here is M. It's a message signal normalized to 1. So basically, your M would be your signal divided by the maximum of that signal. Okay, so it's normalized to 1. And your output will be a voltage signal also normalized to 1. Don't need to know how to implement these for now. Okay, So there will be a demonstration uh, using a, sim uh, a, sim a simulation file for you to uh, play around compounding. Okay, so uh, this is the graph of different techniques, the mu law and the a law. 
as you can see, uh, mu here and a is our parameters for both laws. And if we increase both parameters, your curve will look like this. The transfer function from input to output will look like this. It becomes curved, more curved. Okay? But the endpoints always start from 0 and end at 1. Right? And we have a 1 is to 1 mapping between input to output. But here, if you look at the signal here from 0 to 0 0.1, if the signal fluctuates from 0 to 0 0.1, okay, the corresponding output, okay, the corresponding output is a large fluctuation. Now, if your signal is uh, fluctuating okay, from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 in comparison, So this is your input signal right here. The fluctuation of the output is very small compared to this. So it's compressed, basically. So if we try to fluctuate the signal from 0 0.2 to 1, the output fluctuation will be compressed from 0 0.7 to 1 approximately okay, so this large fluctuation here will now be compressed therefore compressing the signal the large the small fluctuation here will be expanded and you will be able to quantize that okay and there will be a demo for this so you can get a feel of how compounding works to uh, increase the quality of the transmission okay so just to summarize this part of the lecture Quantization is a process that maps a signal level to discrete values. Uh, this process inherently adds noise to the signal, quantifying the error of representing an analog signal to, as a digital signal. Okay? If you want a more accurate representation, you need to use more computer memory by having more bits per symbol. Okay? And uh, the, the noise is defined by the quantization step, which is the difference between adjacent discrete signal levels. A larger quantization step means more noise is added to the signal. And finally, to uh, solve the problem of large crest factor signals, we use the technique of compounding. Okay? By compounding, you can reduce the number of bits used for the signals with large crest factors. So instead of just uh, adding more bits to represent the smaller fluctuations, we can just use compounding and we can retain the same number of bits and represent the signal uh, better, more accurately, compared to uniform quantization. Okay. So that's the end of this part of the lecture. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for listening. See you next meeting.